Right. So you said that you were basically loading them over a two week period. So what happens uh, like what what did the American army try to do in order to help like the civilians then who are waiting for like these ships to come and, and pick them up? Well, not everybody was there for a two week period of time, but there were animals there. There were oxen and so forth. And and people brought their food or whatever they had there, and they were lined up on the beaches, and the pictures would show this to you specifically uh, in terms of that. And, and uh, it's very evident that, that uh, maybe, maybe you would like this. Uh, about a year ago, the chaplain of where we live interviewed me, and I have a, I have a DVD and a thumb drive of that interview. And if you would like that, I would be able to share that with you. That might give you a very firsthand personal experience of what was done by a professional film photographer uh, on that. And that would give you some added information if you chose to do that. But that's pretty much what happened with the civilian interaction. But when... <laughs> To show you what, what happened on board the vessel, when, when I talked to Captain LaRue's first mate who lived in New York, and I located him, and he and I became friends, uh, he, he said that when they were pulling out of the harbor, um, he learned that there were four berths on ship. Wow on the trip from North Korea to South Korea. And Lieutenant Lunny said to Captain LaRue, what else was disturbing was that they were cooking on hibachis in a hold below, but the hibachis were on 55 gallon gasoline drums in the vessel below, and that was always kind of cute in terms of knowing because, you know, these people brought a lot of their personal possessions. We wouldn't allow animals or furniture hmm. uh, on board for obvious reasons. So they, they separated that. So that's a little inside story in terms of the interaction with the army and the military police at the time. Mm -hmm. 